Okay, this this is really important. This is like the most important part of the episode. Well, not the most important thing, but this is part where this is the part where I I legitimately didn't discuss this. This is a mistake on my part. I didn't discuss this in the loose relationship video with Shirley or the one in my big one where I said, you know, this loose love, Shirley, C2, or Colin. Okay? This is very important stuff right here. At the very end of the episode of stage 14, I'm going to get you the exact quote of what Lush says. I, I, For some reason, I had never read this before, but it's kind of damning when you read what he says, when you, when you listen to what he says here, okay? Here we go. Maybe I was too soft. Maybe I wouldn't better off to just kill Shirley. But yes, the power of the king will condemn me to a life of solitude. So I need to harden my heart even more. That's me a mile. Payback. Lelouch basically admits he should have killed Shirley. I don't know if it was a typo in the story, but he basically said he should have killed Shirley. And I don't know what the how you can justify him loving or caring about Shirley in that way. If he was actually going to kill her. And he even said, I mean, I'm too soft for not having killed her. I don't know how <laughs> it's, um, it's pretty weird to me that they, um, they put that in the story. I haven't watched the story sub yet. So I have no idea if, if that's how it was in the sub, but Elush literally speculated on killing Shirley and said he probably should have. You you do what you want with that information, but I do find that odd that for someone who people claim really loved Shirley, she, he even speculated killing her, which he never considered for C2 or Colin. Granted, he can't kill C2, oh. but you get the point. Um, Cecile's talking to Suzaku about, uh, to Lloyd about certain issues with Suzaku, how his performance is excellent, but actually his uh, mentally... There's something going on with him, so they want to do an evaluation, see a doctor. Now, what I find interesting about this is that was a couple things. When they're talking, uh, Lloyd says, are you taking care of him instead of someone else? And I'm thinking, wait, who is he referring to? I, I was really confused. I, I think I wrote like, um, yeah, Lloyd, Lloyd said, are you taking care of Suzaku instead of someone else? And I was thinking, wait. The Cecile had a former lover. Now, we, we find out later on there was a guy she was interested in. But I never got the impression that uh, they were dating or anything. So I'm not sure who, what Lloyd was even talking about here. Maybe he was teasing that they're, they're dating or something. I don't know. It was kind of strange. They never follow up on it again. It was like a random joke. Maybe it was bad dubbing. I will uh, confess, I didn't see this. I didn't read this uh, or watch it sub for the scene. So I don't know exactly where or what rather they're referring to. Uh, but that was kind of interesting. Another thing that I found this scene, that this is really insignificant, but to me, to me it matters. So I'm, I'm pulling it up right here because you can't see it so well. I'm going to mute my thing so I don't get in trouble. Uh, come on now. Let me, get, let me load up real quick. Uh, 14. So during that scene when they're talking, so... They don't give you a one shot, which is kind of annoying. But if you, let's see, maybe they do. Okay, so Lloyd, Lloyd's typing on his computer. So the seal's wearing a certain outfit. Now, you're probably wondering, like, okay, so what? Well, uh, yeah, see this outfit here? I have the game generator code loaded up. We're not going to play right now, but I just want to show you something. Uh, let me get to it real quick. Yeah, see this outfit here? Here. This is the same outfit she's wearing in that scene. I was wondering the whole time where they came up with this uh, from the for the game, but apparently it's this scene here. So, a little trivia for you. This is where they came up with that outfit. All right, that, that's enough of that. Okay, we had this, this this little part of the story which I really liked, and one of my complaints about this episode is that they don't ever follow up with this conversation again. It kind of just happened, and then that was it. Where Ogi's thinking, okay, the uh, Katsuse didn't kill himself. That's not what actually happened here. Because he didn't understand like why he would have done that. And then all of a sudden, Detard's like, hmm, you're right. It wasn't, was it? And that's it. We don't hear more of it. I wanted this to go further. I would have liked it if they had spent more time with Ogi and Detard talking about what happened to General Katase because they don't actually, they never follow up with this. I know later on in uh, turn 19, they kind of bring up that they might have been discussing about it after this point, but... This was a great back and forth conversation, and they kind of have to sideline it 
to discuss the situation with Shirley, which I also thought was good, but this banter in the Black Knights, these these small segments are really they're gems in the story, but we don't get enough of them. And this will be good too, because if they had gone further, we might have got everyone's perspective because I mean Ogi basically implies that Kaga said didn't kill himself. Dietrich's like, I agree. And that's just how it ends. I would love to see Colin defend uh, Zero or Tamaki. They, they kind of did. They kind of didn't. I would have. Uh, I wanted more. So, time with that. Not the great. Then C2 and Lucia are going to Naruto. C2 is wearing the most ridiculous outfit in the whole series. And uh, basically, they talk about Shirley. And this is the first part where uh, she asks Lucia, you know, do you love Shirley? And he's like, I don't know. You know, do you hate her? I don't know. So, Pure asking, you know, did he like Lush, uh, Did did he love Shirley or not? The answer is he he just maybe he did at one point, but it was never really uh, confirmed in the story. Then we get to a scene where Lush is feeling bad about the whole situation. He t- you know he talked to Shirley at the the same place, the the, mo- the same monument, and then Shirley saying, you know, I'm not sure why I was here, and then Lush is saying, I lost so important to me, the smile that could save me from like darkness, and she, and she said, oh, you must love her, and he said, I don't know. Again, he can't confirm anything. But to be fair, love is a very difficult thing to confirm. I want to say at least have feelings for. So that's kind of 14 in a nutshell. nutshell. Lush fell over uh, because she did try to shoot him once, but she missed. And when he falls over, all the photos that she took of him, which, by the way, a little stalkerish. Like this one here, for example. uh, There's two photos of him laying on the ground. I assume she took photos of that with Lush not knowing. All these poses may question otherwise. So Shirley was uh, low-key stalking Lelouch. I guess no one ever talks about that. I mean, he's sleeping here, and she took a photo of him. <laughs> That's kind of creepy. Anyhow, uh, the photo was a good uh, ploy on, or I, I guess a good ploy or plan of Lelouch, because I guess his thought was, and this is, again, this is just me kind of like putting the pieces together. If Lelouch knows that, that Shirley has his gun... And that she's upset at the fact that he killed um, her father. When he encounters her, she might be willing to use it again, considering there was blood on the floor, which means Shirley must have shot someone already. So putting it all together, he had to find a way to calm her down. And obviously, if, boy, if talking didn't work, he could show her photos to remind her as well of the fact they were together, the student council, all that's to calm her down. That's why I assume he brought the photos, because that's what happened here. It kind of confused her, which I guess was good enough. And then Lucia uses Gias on C2 and on Shirley because she she was again very sporadic and he was like, Well, you gotta you gotta forget everything. She's like, How can I? You know, I want you to love me. I shot you. And then Lucia's like, Look, you, he didn't know what to do exactly. So he figured erasing her memories was the best solution, which honestly probably was. I mean, he could command her to do other stuff. And I, I've gone back and forth a bunch of times. What was the best command in this situation? I, I personally think erasing her memories was. Definitely up there because if he if she forgets about his existence, she won't get involved with life anymore. She won't uh, uh, even. I mean, the reason why this happened in the first place was because they suspected Lush could be uh, zero, and they were friends. So I assume that's what kind of triggered Vlad to even target her in the first place. Although that was a, a bad mistake on Vlad's part because she didn't realize that Shirley had feelings for Lush. Although again, she was kind of shaking in the car in the previous episode when she speculated. Or when she told her that Lush could be zero. So again, Vlad kind of screwed up there. The point I'm trying to make is that Shirley uh, couldn't handle the situation too well of Lush being the, the man she loves, but also wanted to kill her father. So the best way to solve the problem, I think, was raise her memories. If she never gets involved with Lush again, then this will never occur. Which was his strategy going forward. If you remember, he he told uh, from C2, we learned that you should keep the people you care about at a distance. So I assume that's why he he did that with with Shirley. Although let's be honest, it was an, I, I, a decent strategy. Ultimately, though, it didn't lead to anything uh, productive, and she well he lost her anyways. <laughs> Here's a good part. So uh, early on in the episode, let me get back to the beginning here. Um, actually, maybe I could just do this, so I don't have to make you guys uh, listen go through the whole thing. So when they're in the uh, right after. You remember the part when they're in the uh, the base talking and Dieter discussing with uh, Ogi about what happened? Well, before that occurs, there's a conversation that happens about the whole situation. And yeah, right here. And they're all saying, and I love this part. You get, it's one thing you got to pay attention to. 
They all said that Tamaki was wiped out in the first couple of minutes of Narita. Uh, or, no, I'm sorry, poor Yokosuka. They said like he he lost immediately. They're all ripping on Tamaki, which makes you wonder again, why is he allowed in this organization when everyone everyone knows he sucks? So I I, <laughs> I thought it was funny. I go, yeah, Tamaki was out in the first five minutes. Why even send the guy out there? What a waste of ammunition, nightmare frame, and everyone's time, honestly. I wonder how many nightmare frames, like uh, this some kind of stat that only they would know. How many nightmare frames did uh, Tamaki destroy over the course of the series? It must have been like 30. The guy was awful. I think he, he trashed more than, than Lelouch, which is pretty impressive.